an entrepreneur, you're an author, and you're going to share with me a little bit how you feel people can bring out their best productivity, how they can perform better. How did you tap into this for yourself? Where did it all start? So for me, and long story short, is I was very off track uh, early on in life, and I decided to turn that around. That very quickly, I you know, very quickly I realized that I had to do a bunch of personal growth, and I wanted to do entrepreneurship. These two seemed to be the the vehicles that were going to take me to the life and career that I wanted. And so, the 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 bread and butter of what I do is is as you said, uh, high performance and stuff like that, and. Really, that's just something I've always been very passionate about and, and kind of obsessed with this idea that if you can do something smarter, if you can do something um, in a systematized way instead of in a random way, oftentimes that's um, that's going to outperform, you know, being being random with your intentions. And so all this just was something I've been very passionate about for a long time. So when you decided to kind of reroute, how did yes. you start setting the wheels into motion? What did that start looking like for you when you had that? Absolutely. So the very first thing was clarity, which I believe is the first step of everything. So I had to really get clear on what kind of life I wanted, you know, what kind of life did I want, what kind of freedom, what kind of confidence, what kind of relationships, all of that. And also in my business or in my, at the, at the beginning, I wasn't a business person yet, right? But I had a very clear intention that I was going to be an entrepreneur, I was going to build businesses. And so... For that, I needed clarity as well. And I think that's one thing that a lot of entrepreneurs would benefit from is this 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 connection between your 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 values and what it truly is that you want and then what's actually happening in your business. So on a on a bigger scale, this could be something like uh, freedom is important to me, but then you're building a business that isn't set up to give you that. So for example, if if a client of mine tells me that freedom is an important part of his or her uh, life or they would like it to be I would like to dive deeper into that you know what is freedom for you is it a freedom of location for example for me everything I've, I've done today I could have done in another country if I wanted to I have freedom of location um, that's not important to everyone but it's important to to me so I've designed my business that way could also be a you know freedom of your time it could be so freedom can mean many things but once you know what kind of freedom it is that you want you can kind of design your business around that. So if you want freedom of location, but you're building a company that requires you to be in the office 60 hours per week, this is where we'll see a lot of stress and burnout and overwhelm. It's where we'll see low performance, low, low passion, low energy. And so, yeah, I think alignment with your values is a very big part of what we do. And yeah. For anybody to realize what path they want to be, on is very rewarding. It can be a challenge to decide or know what that path is. Do you have any tips for people who struggle with uh, figuring out what their values are and how to get on that path? Absolutely. So first I would like to say we have a bunch of, of free help. We would love to help you out with that. But definitely uh, questions is something that I've had a lot of success with myself, but also is what we use for clients and so if you're asking yourself a lot of questions i think that's that's very powerful so questions can be big they can also be be small a big question could be what would an ideal life look like for me and why you know why would i want this kind of health and how exactly would it look and all these things um but also small questions just like wait why did that sales call piss me off a little bit but the sales call before didn't wait why am i not looking forward to that one podcast I have tomorrow, but I'm really looking forward to the one in two days. Why? What's the difference there? So I think asking yourself a bunch of questions like that and maybe have your business partner or your colleague or your spouse or your sibling or whatever ask you some of these tough questions can really uh, help you learn what it is that 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 you value, but also learn more about your, your own kind of buttons and mechanisms. So What's one of the first things you did for yourself to start answering those tough questions? Like, was did yeah, you? So I, sorry. No, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I, I read a lot. I read a lot. Okay. Uh, a lot of personal growth books, a lot of business books, and life books, and lifestyle books, and all these things. And I also looked at a lot of people, and I would once again ask myself, okay, that person, would I want his life? Yeah, maybe, but not this part. Wait, why don't I want that part? 
that's because this and that. Okay, but I really want, I, I really would like to be in his place in this way and that way. And why is that? And how can I kind of replicate what it is that he's been doing? And so, so yeah, I think personal growth, I think looking at people that have a, a life or maybe have a result, this can be in business, it can be in, you know, outside of business that you value. And then ask yourself, why do I value that? And not these other things. Um, so, yeah. Now with, you know, the personal career part, you know, reading, all of that is important, but what about, because Run Radio is about inspiring strides in life radio and beyond, we definitely appreciate the physical element of progression. Did you find that you were able to move more or put a fitness routine into place that helped you with your personal uh, business growth? Absolutely. I think health is one of the main pillars of my life. I think health in terms of mental health and physical health and emotional health is so, so important. And I think it's kind of like a, a double thing where if you take care of your health, you'll also by default improve just about everything else in your life. And also if you set these other pillars in your life up, so your business and relationships up in a way that allows you to take care of your health, it's kind of like a double uh, benefit there. So I think health is just a, a huge part of it. And even with health, I would say, get very clear on what it is that we're, we're trying to do. So first you could say, okay, I want to be healthy. And then we could say, okay, what, what's what's the next health improvement you would like to make? Is that an increase in muscle mass? Is it cardiovascular? Is it, um, you know, is it just a general feeling of health and energy? What is it that we're trying to do? And then we can, even then you can kind of dive deeper and say, okay, um, I would like, you know, a better, you know, I would like to, to be a better runner. Okay, what what does that mean? Is that, you know, longer distances? Is it running, um, you know, shorter times? Or what, what is that? So I think clarity goes definitely for, for health as well. What are some of your personal hobbies? So I like... Uh, weightlifting, I like being in the gym. I like martial arts a lot. So I will do a bunch of Muay Thai and MMA and stuff like that. And then I just like cardio in in nature. There is nothing more peaceful for me than a good run around a lake or in some, you know, some hills or in a forest, um, stuff like that. I can go for a nice bike ride as well, but definitely the run yeah. um, in, in nature, I think. When I was when I was young, my, my granddad taught me that a a walk or a run in nature is shampoo for the soul. And <laughs> I would I probably didn't understand what he meant when I was six years old or eight years old, but I certainly do today. So Yeah, yeah. It definitely does make a difference getting out and breathing that fresh air in. Yeah. So you're very disciplined, it sounds like, in even your hobbies. How do you steer someone who's not as disciplined? in their own life when they're trying to have a better career or just there are hobbies, their relaxing time sometimes is not very structured. How do you switch that mindset for people? Absolutely. So without sounding like a breaking a broken record, I think clarity is the first part. So actually identifying what it is they're trying to do. The second thing that I really care about a lot is seeing if you can systematize things. I feel like a lot of people um, they have to fight themselves a lot during the day. I have this concept that I call a hundred fights. And this probably, I probably came up with this because of my, uh, my martial arts hobby, but I understand that in boxing or MMA or whatever it is, no matter how good you are at that, at that sport, if you were to fight a hundred times per day, you would lose. Maybe you'd lose 70% of them. Maybe you'd lose 30 of them, but you would lose. Uh, a bunch of them and even the ones that you were winning would probably cost you some kind of you know it, it would cost you energy it would cost you pain it would cost you time all these things so no matter who we are we cannot win 100 fights per day yet i feel like a lot of people live their lives like that they wake up and the alarm rings and and immediately the first decision is there should i snooze or should i get up Okay, maybe I'll snooze. And then five minutes later, okay, should I snooze or should I get up? So you're fighting yourself. And then oh, you wake up and, okay, should I put on my running shoes or should I just, you know, scroll on Instagram a little bit? So before you know it, you, you've been fighting yourself 40 times already and maybe you've only been awake for four hours. And that's that's real taxing. And also it's just, yeah, just, I, I no wonder a lot of these New Year's resolutions and all these things aren't working out because it's, 
it's very tough to fight yourself this much. So what, what I try to do with clients is we try to automate a lot of it. So a system, instead of saying, I will fight myself to go to the gym, sometimes maybe it will work if I'm full of energy and the stars are aligned and sometimes it won't work. Instead of saying that, we, we go, maybe you could try saying you would work out on your way home from work on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. By doing it that way, we remove the decision and re we re remove the fight. And, and I think that's a very powerful thing that we do for people that will eliminate or at least drastically reduce procrastination and overwhelm and, and doubt and all these things. What's a typical client look like for you? And do you have a story about a client that you took through start to finish and have watched them just blossom? Absolutely. So a typical client is either someone who is not performing in business because other areas of their lives are not optimized. This could be their health or it's someone who is performing in business, but the other areas of life are not what they would like them to be. So I had a client in her early fifties, mid fifties, um, who, who was very happy with her career, but she, she was far from happy with her, with her health. And because of her health not being where she wanted it to be and her not fixing it or being able able to fix it, that kind of hurt her self-worth and all these things as well. And she wouldn't really go to, to parties and stuff because she felt, you know, she wasn't as comfortable with the body. There's nothing she would wear or whatever. Um, and so we, we started looking at her, her health and we identified what exactly it was that she wanted. To. And at first she wanted to lose weight. And so we came up together with some things that we knew would bridge the gap. I call them bridge the gap activities between where she is now and where she'd like to be. And then we, when we just set up systems and the thing with her is she had been trying for 30 years with all these fast methods, you know, mm -hmm. eat this Kenyan herb uh, and, and then you'll lose 40 pounds in two days and all these things. And, and it's no wonder that it doesn't work because the things, that I believe the ingredients that I believe are necessary for a successful outcome are things like discipline and momentum and routine and all these things. And you, you, you don't have any of those with those fast methods. So what I wanted to do with her was build some systems that I knew, okay, maybe it doesn't sound sexy to begin with. It doesn't sound like it's going to produce a fast result, but we just built, put the systems in place and then we can scale them. And that's something we can get back to because once you have a system, you can scale them. Um, and I told her, look, the most important thing is that we build a system and that we get started. So that system could be very, should be very, very small. And, and I told her, look, we can start with you. Just when you wake up in the morning, just drink one glass of water. I don't care what you do for the rest of the day. If you, if you eat, you know, whatever, we'll, we'll get to that for now. All you got to worry about is drinking that glass of water. And I think she kind of jokingly asked me, what if I can't even do that? And I just told her, then we'll say, you'll drink a glass of water on Monday mornings. That's it. I literally just want to get started. Um, and then once that was system, it was just a part of her. And she told me, I, I can't imagine not doing this. Cool. Now we can build the next system. And then eventually you have a bunch of systems for how you're hydrating, for how you're eating, for how you're exercising, for how you, you know, what, you know, how you're sleeping and all these things and solar health. Even though I call it the slow way. Her, she got really, really, really quick results. I think she lost like 17 kilograms in four months or something like that. And she just, so, so, and now she has, has this template that I kind of gave her, right? With these systems and all that. And then she used, now she's using it for uh, strength gains. So she's doing some cardio and some strength gains as well. She's using it for other areas of her life. And now she can essentially just take this template and plug and play into any area of her life that she's looking to improve. And that's exactly what she's doing, even though I'm not working with her anymore. Um, so, and I actually, she actually called me a few weeks ago and told me that at her company, they had some health experts, health consultants out there that were, that were willing to take a bunch of tests, and I think some blood work and some strength tests and all these things. And, and if you wanted to, you could have that. And, and she wanted that. So she, she went for it and she just got great, great, great results on everything because, because of the work that, that we did. And that's, that's her words. She told me that. It would have been very different if, if she had worked with me. So, so I'm very proud of, of that. Yeah. Excellent. And you, you wanted to go back a little bit about expanding on. Yeah. So, so one thing I'm very big on is, is momentum. Mm -hmm. And I always say the easiest thing in the world 
is scaling a system that is that's already a system. So if you can read six pages of a good book every night before bed, you can probably read seven as well, maybe even eight, probably nine as well, right? If you can work out for 40 minutes at the, at the gym, you can probably work out 45. If you can run for 30 minutes, you can probably run 35. So, so once we have a system that's just dialed in and it just feels like it's a part of us and I, I want to do this and I have to do this and it just happens without me having to fight myself, it's very easy to scale. So the problem that I have is when we want to go from never having worked out ever to now running two hours per day and weightlifting two hours per day, six days per week, and we can only eat salad and drink lemon, lemon water. And because the, 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 the value is not so much in doing a, a crazy bunch of stuff for one day, the value is in designing systems. And then we just scale those, which is a lot easier than people think it is. The difficult part is getting started. What else would you like to share with people that are really, they're sold on the idea of improving every aspect of their life? How can they start today? Where can they go to get more information from you? So the um, the clarity you, you asked about, how do people go about gaining that? I actually just finished writing a free PDF called The Seven Pillars of a World-Class Life, which is my seven primary values in life and some of them you'll probably share and some of them maybe you want but it's a very good starting point for how to start thinking about what these values are and the layers of those values and then how I go about building them uh, and building systems for them so if anyone's interested in that I think you can you can go ahead and, and grab that on my website and it's completely free you can just enjoy that and um, and yeah obviously if anyone is interested in having me personally look at your situation i will be happy to do that for free as well just take a look and give you some pointers or and point you in the right direction but uh, the pdf is a really good place right. to start as well and where is that passion for achievement.com correct so passion and then the number four and then achievement.com and then also on my on my instagram yeah i am daniel hauge you will have a bunch of free content where i'm aiming to just help as much as i can and the, the pdf will also be there in the bio so is there anything else I haven't thought to ask you that you want to share? Maybe I just want to give some very generic reminder. You know, sometimes, sometimes it's powerful with new information. Sometimes it's powerful to just be reminded to, to, to you know, you, you can have and be more than you are right now. And it's not, it's not meant as a, you should be more, you should do more, you're not enough, blah, blah, blah. It's more as a, there is a life that you can imagine right now that you would be happier living than the life that you currently have right now. So there's a gap between those, you know, where you are and where you'd like to be. And I'm just, I'm telling you, I promise it's it's possible to close that gap. Sometimes it feel, feels like it isn't, but it is. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time and come back anytime if you want to share some more encouragement because I think it's stuff that we all need to hear. And again, you can go to passion, the number four achievement.com and connect with Daniel there. Thank you so much. Be sure you're following along at runradio.net.